hi everyone in the previous lecture we have done about the nutrition the types of nutrition amongst which we studied about autotrophic and heterotrophic nutrition in order to autotrophic nutrition we have studied that it is the nutrition which is made by the plants in which the plants make their own food and provide us with the food Second type of nutrition is heterotrophic nutrition in which the animals depend upon other animals for their food. So in the heterotrophic nutrition we will study the three types of nutrition. The first nutrition is the holozoic nutrition. In the holozoic nutrition is the type of nutrition in which the animals with this nutrition will obtain the op complex organic food material by consuming other organisms that is the organism which is obtaining food by this mode of nutrition will be what that it will eat the other full organism that means say for example herbivores in herbivores the example is cow cow eats grass as its food so as a result it has eaten grass as its own food similarly in carnivores example of a carnivore is a lion what does a lion or a tiger do they eat the flesh of the other animal they eat like for example tiger eats the flesh of a deer so that is what on, under the holozoic mode of nutrition third like omnivores like we omnivores are the humans etc what do we do we also eat the full organism as an whole vegetarian people eat plants non vegetarian people eat animal so we eat animal on its own on the whole so that in which the other organism is killed and is eaten on a whole is called as the holozoic mode of nutrition apart from that in saprotrophic nutrition what happens is the animals will obtain their nutrition from dead and decaying plants or animals that means they won't kill the animal or they won't eat the animal but what happens is the already killed organism that is their killed animal has been already killed by any any of the means and its dead and decaying matter is left over on the ground so that that dead and decaying matter would be fed upon by the saprotrophic nutrition animals so thus these animals are called as saprotrophs example saprophytes bacteria fungi molds mushrooms etc all this fall under the category of saprophytes thirdly parasitic nutrition is the nutrition in which the animal will obtain food from the other living organism that is the host that means in this type the animal goes and gets inhabitant in some other organism and takes food from that organism and in turn also it harms that particular organism say for example if we take for an example of a plasmodium or say for example simple example of a mosquito let's i'll explain you with an example of a mosquito now what does a mosquito do mosquito goes and starts living inside some other organism it keeps on deriving the blood the nutrition from it and keeps on harming it for example whenever a mosquito bites at what does it do it sucks blood from our body what is it doing it is harming us also it is taking our food also from us so that mode of nutrition is nothing but parasitic mode of nutrition and these organisms are called as parasites in which we will become the host for that mosquito and thus mosquito will act as a parasite what does that parasite done to us the host it has harmed us also and it has taken its food from us also so such type of nutrition animals are called as parasitic animals example are many plasmodium tenia ascaris mosquito leeches similarly saprophytes have already told you fungi basically mushrooms molds they are example of saprophytes and in holozoic mode of nutrition showing animals are called as holozoic animals that is amoeba insects frog reptiles which eat the other insect as a whole only which are eat the other animal or other organism as a complete whole so this is about the heterotrophic nutrition so three types holozoic saprotrophic and parasitic moving on to the next we will start with the nutrition in plants that is photosynthesis now these green plants these are called as producers we all know that why are they called producers because they perform photosynthesis they make their own food they supply us with the food made by them now the question in nutrition in plants is that how do they make their own food how do they supply us and how do they themselves also get benefit how do they get food how do they convert 
and make the food so it is the process by which green plants synthesize the complex food material carbohydrate in the presence of sunlight using carbon dioxide water in the presence of chlorophyll what is done is in nature everybody knows that there is abundant of sunlight apart from the sunlight we have plants growing every here and there now how are these plants directly linked to that sunlight what happens is the sunlight falls on the plant in nutshell what happens is the sunlight falls on the plant the plants take in that solar energy from the sun in and that solar energy is captured by the plant with the help of that solar energy these plants in the presence of carbon dioxide water and chlorophyll converts the organic material into the food that is glucose that is what this equation is showing the carbon dioxide has combined with water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll has resulted in the formation of glucose and along with that two by products are released that is oxygen which is released into the air and is then used by humans and other animals for breathing and water is released as a by product now we will study the each and every minute detail of this that how does this glucose is being formed and or how is this oxygen being released the most important part you have to understand for the basis of photosynthesis is that green plants convert solar energy into the chemical energy of food all the green plants convert solar energy to chemical energy of food what are the events of photosynthesis the light energy or solar energy is absorbed by chlorophyll what will happen first of all as i have told you that sunlight is falling on the plant the when sunlight is falling on the plant that light energy or the solar energy that is being captured by the plant and who is capturing it the chlorophyll like for example this is the leaf of the plant this is the sunlight which is falling so sunlight will fall on the leaf the rays will come down on the leaf leaf also has three layers leaf has three layers upper epidermis lower epidermis middle meso mid middle layer which is known as middle mesophyll layer now there are certain cells called chloroplasts present in this middle layer of the leaf and these chloroplast contain pigments called as green colored pigment that is chlorophyll you can see this green colored pigment which i am making inside these red cells called as chloroplast these cells are in red i just shown you to differentiate with different colors but this chlorophyll pigment is actually green in color so what will happen that this sunlight will come and will get absorbed by these chlorophyll pigment this chlorophyll pigment will take the sunlight and convert it into chemical energy there is a process which will occur in the chloroplast with the help of chlorophyll pigment that this solar energy gets converted into chemical energy that is what is it ex it is being explained that cytophotosynthesis it occurs in the leaves of the plant that is what we have done leaves have three layers i have shown you upper epidermal middle mesophyll lower epidermal middle mesophyll have the green colored organelles we have already studied what are these called chloroplast or plastids the plastid is the other name of plastid is actually chloroplast is a type of plastid so you will you might have also studied about plastids in your chapter cell before in class 9th so chloroplast will contain pigments called as various pigments are present not only chlorophyll there are other pigments also xanthophylls carotenoids etc but the major pigment which we have to deal with now in photosynthesis is the chlorophyll which is present in abundance it is green colored pigment present in the chloroplast in the green leaves that is what will happen the solar energy will be get observed by chloroplast and then this light energy is converted into solar energy or the chemical energy you can see this carbon dioxide is chemically converted into carbohydrates when this light energy gets 
gets converted into solar energy solar energy will get converted into chemical energy when this chemical energy will be formed this will help convert carbon dioxide into carbohydrates because this chemical energy will only provide energy to perform a chemical reaction in which this carbon dioxide gets converted into glucose this is how in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll the light energy which was captured by the middle mesophyll layer of the leaves containing chloroplast with the pigment chlorophyll will fix the solar energy into chemical energy that will help converting carbon dioxide into carbohydrates you can see in this diagram the sunlight solar energy captured by leaf converted into chemical energy this chemical energy has helped carbon dioxide to convert into carbohydrates and the last event is the water molecules also get split in the presence of sunlight to release oxygen now first effect the sunlight had on leaves by which light energy got converted into solar energy and then finally to chemical energy by which carbon dioxide got converted into carbohydrates on the other hand this sunlight also falls on the water molecules this when sunlight falls on the water molecules this water molecules get split hydrogen ions are released separately oxygen ions are released separately the oxygen ions will join together to form oxygen gas whereas this hydrogen with combine with the leftover oxygen to form water molecules this is how water is released as a by product in the photosynthesis along with the oxygen right so this is how oxygen and water both are released by splitting up of water this solar energy will fall on water it will split up into two things these hydrogen will combine with the leftover oxygen to form water and these oxygen ions will definitely form oxygen gas these are the major events occurring in the photosynthesis that helps leading to this process any doubts please let me know via the